Hello and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. The Modi 3.0 government unveiled its first union budget reaffirming its commitment to the four pillars of its development agenda, helping the poor and empowering women, youth and farmers. Now the budget outlined a comprehensive strategy to boost manufacturing and services with a strong emphasis on supporting micro, small and medium enterprises. Simplifying taxes and fostering foreign investment also remained key focuses of this budget. Take a look. Business tycoons closely monitored the 2024 to 2025 union budget, the first presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman under the Modi 3.0 government. It focuses on Atma Nirbharta, or self-reliance, by empowering youth, enhancing skills, and boosting agricultural resilience. A key highlight is the Prime Minister's $24 billion package aimed at creating opportunities for 41 million youth over the next five years. This includes a one-month Provident Fund contribution for 3 million new job entrants and a direct benefit transfer of up to 180 for employees earning up to 1200 per month. A substantial amount has been put into skilling a lot of people. Uh, that's going to help because you have to understand only 51% of the graduates today are skilled enough to be in the workforce. And this was almost 34% 10 years ago. So the government has made a lot of effort and progress, but I think we have to go beyond 51%, and that's where the whole uh, investment is going to take place. But more important is, is by reducing the uh, income tax on foreign companies by 5%, that's going to attract uh, multinational to come in and invest more in India. The budget focuses on enhancing agriculture through productivity and climate resilience initiatives. It includes funding for research, the release of 109 high-yield crop varieties, and support for natural farming for 10 million farmers. A digital public infrastructure will feature a crop survey in 400 districts and integrate 60 million farmers into registries. Industry leaders applauded the government's efforts to boost agriculture, increase disposable income, enhance infrastructure, simplify tax laws, and pave the way for India to become the third largest economy, as well as a developed nation. Aspects, whether it's relating to farmers' income, or enhancing the disposable income on, in the hands of the common people or infrastructure. Infrastructure which was 10 lakh crore has been enhanced to 11.11 .11 lakh crore. So all of this uh, simplification, you know, whether it is relating to tax laws or it is relating to decriminalization of certain archaic laws, re-study uh, uh, of the Income Tax Act in order to make it simpler, more user friendly. So I believe it's a very holistic budget which is really going to lay the foundation for the aspiration of India to become the third largest economy in the world and truly a developed country or a Viksit Bharat as our Honorable Prime Minister envisions the country to become. The government has also prioritized support for micro, small and medium enterprises which contribute around 30% of GDP. MSME-related exports increased to 45.56% of total exports in 2023 to 2024. The budget introduces a $12 million credit guarantee scheme for MSMEs, providing collateral free term loans for machinery and equipment. It also abolishes the angel tax and reduces the corporate tax rate for foreign companies from 40% to 35% to improve business conditions and attract investment. इस बजट में एमएसएमएस के लिए ईज ऑफ क्रेडिट बढ़ाने वाली नई योजना का ऐलान किया गया है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और एक्सपोर्ट्स इकोसिस्टम को हर जिले तक ले जाने के लिए बजट में अहम घोषणा की गई है CIA that we want support for MSMEs, we want ease of doing business, we want openness, we want removal of the complications and in many of these ways this uh, announcements by Madam Finance Minister encourage us to believe that that will happen. 
the biggest instance of that is when she says that a lot of the funding given by the government will be based not necessarily on formal book of accounts, but by whatever is your track record in the digital footprint which you have created by being online with the government, whether it is GST, turnover, income tax returns and so on. It shows confidence and it will simplify and make a lot of ease of doing business for uh, MSME members, which is required especially in the micro and small segments. The India Economic Survey 2023 to 2024 projects 6.5 to 7 percent growth for financial year 2024, despite risks from weather, financial markets, and geopolitics. The budget aims to achieve this growth target by emphasizing self-sufficiency, supporting MSMEs, and investing in agriculture. Simplifying business regulations and tax laws will also boost economic growth and position India as a leading global economy. India has significantly emphasized primary education and skill development training. And today we take you to the western state of Gujarat, which has set a new benchmark by providing free education and skill training to underprivileged youth, especially girls. Gujarat, an economically prosperous state in India's western region, places significant emphasis on empowering the underprivileged through education. The Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyale plays a crucial role in supporting girls from disadvantaged backgrounds. These schools enhance educational access for rural and underprivileged girls by providing free residential facilities, meals, textbooks, and uniforms. Established in 2004, these schools target areas with low female literacy rates, offering high-quality education, sports facilities, and post-graduation counseling for holistic development and future success. My girls are all in my village, but I want to do something different and I thought that I didn't want to go to the hostel. That's why I told my mom and dad that I didn't want to go to the hostel. But when I came to the hostel, I thought that our village was not there. We had to do something there, we had to do something there. But here we just studied. और अपने फ्यूचर को साकार करने के लिए आप से जो बन पड़ता है आप वो करो यहाँ पे हमें जो सरकार यहाँ पे बहुत अच्छी हमें चीजें प्रोवाइड करती है मैं जब छठी कक्षा में यहाँ आई थी तब इस कैटिंग कराटे इस सब नाम मैंने पहली बार सुने थे और धीरे-धीरे करके हम इस कैटिंग और कराटे या अन्य प्रवृत्तियों खाते हैं और बहुत अच्छा लगता है यहाँ पढ़ने में और सभी लड़कियों इतनी इतनी अच्छी वो है और सौ लड़कियाँ हैं यहाँ तो रहने में भी बहुत मजा आता है Currently, 257 Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyales in Gujarat serve around 30,000 girls from economically disadvantaged backgrounds, with the state government spending approximately $425 per girl annually. Since its inception, KGBV has benefited over 80,000 girls, significantly improving their access to education and opportunities. Gujarat is uh, utilizing the fund dispersed by GUI. But we are getting the funds from our state also. We are getting the funds from CSR funding, NGOs. We are taking the support of IITs for the betterment of the girls' quality education. In our schools of excellence project, our KGBVs have been benefited by the smart class, technology-aided learning, our G-Shala, and tablets, laptops, etc. Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyales empower girls and inspire their families and communities, fostering self-reliant and dignified lives. Providing education to underprivileged girls is a crucial task. However, to further enhance the skills of educated youth, Koshalya, the skill university, is playing a crucial role. So let's explore how this university is empowering young people through skill development. 
Drone technology is expanding across various sectors, and Koshalia, the Skill University in Ahmedabad, is capitalizing on this trend by offering comprehensive drone training. At the School of Drones, students learn both flying and manufacturing, gaining expertise in all aspects of drone technology. The university's courses aim to equip youth with skills for piloting and producing drones. We are the first university in India who has license from DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation, that, uh, that is the license of type certificate. So we can create, we can produce our own drone and we have produced already 100 plus drones over here. So this is the university that is very different from all other universities. This university uh, can, create, can create the entrepreneurs, this universities can create the technocrats, this universities can develop and manufacture the drones. Founded in October 2021 under India's Skill India vision, Koshalia, the Skill University, empowers youth through skill development. With over 15,000 students enrolled and more than 12,000 graduates, the university offers over 100 programs across six schools, from certificates to PhD levels. Courses in computing, Woodworking and plumbing provide both theoretical and practical training with access to labs and experienced trainers. So, we have made courses in which 80% of the course part is hands-on experience. So, whoever comes here to take training, will be able to do all the machines with hands-on experience. So, like the kids in the skill sector, they were going outside, they didn't know about the machines. उनको प्रोडक्ट के बारे में नहीं पता, उनको क्वालिटी के बारे में नहीं पता होता था, पर हम यहाँ पे सिंस फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट डे, दे आर लर्निंग ऑन द मशीनरीज, जो भी मशीनरीज हैं, पावर टूल्स हैं, कौन-कौन से पावर टूल्स मशीनरीज इंडस्ट्रीज में यूज़ होते हैं, और हैंड टूल्स हैं, उनके बारे में उनको I don't have any idea, so I thought that the carpentry is only furniture, sofa, bed, and a bed. But here I came to complete the year, and I knew that there are different types of sunmaya, different types of plywood, different types of plywood, and different types of power tools machines. There are such machines that I didn't know before. With the motto, Education with Skills, the university offers youth a golden opportunity for a bright future, empowering them through skill-based education. And now we take you to the revered tomb of Hazrat Kattewale Baba in Jaipur, a shining example of communal unity. For centuries, this sacred site has been a beacon of hope and blessings, attracting devotees from far and wide. Located on Tonk Road, this tomb is a testament to the power of faith and the legacy of Hazrat Kattewale Baba, who brought peace and tranquility to this land 500 years ago. Every Thursday, the tomb comes alive with visitors from distant places seeking wisdom and blessings. Located on the bustling Tonk Road of Jaipur, the tomb of Hazrat Gattewale Baba has been a beacon of hope and blessings for over 500 years. The story of Hazrat Gattewale Baba, a revered Sufi saint, is one of peace, tranquility and spiritual enlightenment. Legends has it that Hazrat Gattewale Baba arrived in Jaipur centuries ago, bringing with him a message of love and harmony. His teachings transcended religious boundaries, attracting followers from all walks of life. The tomb, built to honor his legacy, continues to be a place of solace and reflection. Hazrat Gattewale Baba, a unifying figure during a time of great strife. 
His emphasis on compassion and understanding resonated deeply with the people. The tomb is not just a monument, it's a symbol of the lasting impact on his teachings. मेरे को तो किसी ने बोला था मेरे थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम थी तो मैं अपसेट थी तो किसी ने बोला था कि यहाँ पर जाओ आप हर गुरुवार तो आपका काम सफल होगा मैं जब से लेके आज तक हर गुरुवार आती हूँ और उर्स के महीने में यहाँ पर प्रसाद भी ग्रहण करती हूँ तो मेरे तो आस्था है मेरा हर काम हर काम हो जाता है Every Thursday the tomb comes alive with visitors from near and far. Devotees regardless of their religious beliefs gather to seek wisdom, offer prayers and receive blessings. The air is filled with a sense of reverence and unity. The architecture of the tomb reflects a blend of Islamic and local Rajasthani styles. Intricate carvings and serene courtyards create an atmosphere of serenity. Inside the tomb is adorned with floral offerings and candles symbolizing the light of Hazrat Gaddewale Baba's teachings. Aastha ye hai ki yahan pe mere bachpan se aa raha hu mere father leke aate the yahan pe bachpan se fir tab se ho sambhala to hot class hai main bhi aa raha hu aur ho sambhalne ke baad dekha yahan pe ki yahan pe zyada tar log apne hindu bhai aate hain aur behne aati hai mataen aati hai 99% yahan pe hindu aate hain aur unki bahut achhi aastha hai bahut purani aastha hai. The shrine comes alive during the annual Urs festival which commemorates the saint's death anniversary. The festivities which include qawalis, poetry recitals and langar showcase the city's rich cultural tapestry. In a world often divided, the sacred site stands as a testament to the power of faith and the beauty of communal harmony. Now let's delve into a world in focus featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Stadiums are packed and crowds are going wild chanting applauding and supporting the home team and the French have also tuned in with millions watching the Olympic games on TV. After months of doom and gloom Olympic fever has caught in France. On July 31, home fans gathered in Club France to support the French swimming athlete Lyon Marchand, 400 meter medley Olympic gold medal winner on July 28, roaring and chanting Lyon Lyon as he swam the butterfly final. French fan Camille Levro, who came with his two daughters Leah and Julie, wouldn't have missed it for the world. With Marchand's victory in the butterfly final, France is now third in the games medal table with 7 goals behind China and Japan who have 8 each. 23 million tuned in to watch the opening ceremony in France, more than four matches in the Euro 2024 soccer championship. India's workspace sector is evolving with shift in work culture and technological advancements. Businesses are moving away from conventional offices to flexible workspaces that offer a wide range of amenities and collaborative opportunities. And these modern, customized spaces are becoming popular among professionals addressing contemporary needs effectively. Thrive, an advertising and marketing consultancy in Gurugram, operates with a nimble team of eight to ten people. To reduce overhead expenses, the company uses a co-working space, which meets their needs for a compact and efficient workspace. Obviously, it allows us to get a small space of our own. So it's also, you know, using uh, or creating your own workspace within a co-working space. So that really works for us. Uh, when it comes to cost, um, uh, what we do is we kind of pay per person, yet have a small physical cut-off space of our own. uh it's usually uh, i think somewhere between um, you know 2 and 1/2 to 3 and 1/2 lakhs uh that is what we pay every month which includes uh you know electricity internet uh as well as all the overhead expenses so therefore it is much much lesser than all the other expenses which would we would incur if it's a traditional space Many startups and small corporates are opting for flexible workspaces equipped with all the necessary amenities 
This trend is rapidly growing in cities with thriving tech and finance sectors. A recent report shows that around 54% of Indian companies now use co-working spaces to reduce unnecessary expenses. Over the past five years, flexible space providers have captured over 15% of quarterly leasing activity. Companies like WeWork have expanded across multiple locations to accommodate growing workforces and explore new markets. Stylework, an SAAS-based flex workspace aggregator and other providers in India are creating curated workspaces for diverse needs. To raise awareness and attract audiences to flex spaces, Stylework recently organized a two-day event, Unconventional Unions, a Flex Sync, attended by notable Indian brands from the flexible workspace, real estate, and media entertainment sectors. We've got to a uh, total of 10,000 co-working and managed office centers in India. This number was uh, approximately 1,000 centers in 2018-19, right? So we've moved almost uh, 9,000 more centers in the last five years. India is the fastest growing market for flex across the world and uh, second largest market uh, in terms of the total spaces. We have got ourselves to 95 cities where co-working spaces and managed offices are available, right? It was only in 10 or 15 cities earlier. So I think with, with, with that narrative, uh, a, lot of, um, a, a lot of transactions have happened, right? And making it almost a $1.5 billion total worth transaction annually that rotates within the industry as a market cap for this. Flexible workspaces are transforming traditional Indian offices by providing adaptable environments for professionals, businesses, and freelancers. Cost efficient and conducive to networking, these spaces foster collaboration and offer opportunities for new connections. With amenities for relaxation and recreation, they promote a better work-life balance as well. The whole um, industry, I think, after COVID has changed, right? And I think it's a great opportunity for the young entrepreneurs, right? Uh, who don't have to invest that much capital now uh, into uh, the real estate and they get opportunity to have a good working space, good environment, comfortable environment uh, for their employees uh, and work at very, very good uh, spaces which are very, very convenient, right? A 2024 survey predicts that the percentage of Indian companies dedicating over 10% of their office space to flexible workspaces will rise from 42% in early 24 to 58% by 2026. As India embraces this trend, flexible workspaces will play a crucial role in shaping the future of work culture within the country. In Indian society, bangles are more than just ornaments. They hold deep cultural and traditional significance, particularly for women. In Muzaffarpur, Bihar, the art of making lahati or lark bangles is a cherished tradition and these vibrant bangles with their rich heritage play a key role in various festivals and rituals across India. Whether for a marriage, festival or any auspicious occasion, women in India wear intricately designed bangles as part of their rituals and traditions. Across the country, Artisans skillfully handcraft these bangles. In the bustling city of Muzaffarpur in Bihar, the timeless art of lahati, or lock bangles, thrives. Crafted from natural lock resin, these bangles are more than just ornaments. They embody cultural heritage and the spirit of Indian women. Unlike synthetic bangles, Lahati bangles are a tribute to nature. The process begins with melting lac resin over a coal burner. The molten resin is mixed with wax and pigments to form a colored dough, which is then rolled on a wooden rod to create a round shape. Distinct to Muzaffarpur's lac treatment is the exclusive use of fire, which imparts a unique significance to these bangles compared to those from other regions. ठंडा लाख केमिकल बोला जाता है और इस लाख में मिट्टी ही मिक्स होता है मैक्सिमम वो एक्चुअल में वो सूख जाने पे टूटता नहीं है ठंडा लाख लेकिन ये जमीन पे गिरते ही टूट जाता है The art of lahati making is a time honored legacy with families preserving intricate techniques through generations These bangles are more than fashion accessories 
They are a bridge to the past, connecting mothers and granddaughters. Embedded in Bihar's cultural heritage, Lahati bangles symbolize marital bliss and are a cherished part of a married woman's identity. Their popularity has extended beyond local boundaries to national figures like Sachin Tendulkar and Ashwarya Bachchan, and they were recently sent to Ayodhya for the Ram Temple consecration ceremony. This is very traditional, very old. Our grandmothers used to wear a lot of clothes, and when the husband goes to the house, he wears a lot of clothes. And when the daughter goes to the house, she wears a lot of clothes. She wears a lot of clothes from both sides. The Lahati Bangles are the In Indian culture, bangles are symbols of prosperity, good fortune, and marital bliss. Worn by women in various colors and materials for specific occasions, they signify fertility and auspiciousness, especially during weddings. Their use in rituals and ceremonies underscores their role in cultural identity and continuity. Bangles are an integral part of Indian womanhood, symbolizing tradition and culture. With that, it's a wrap on today's episode of My India, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.